Okay, so what I'm going to show you guys today is how to paint the sphere. This is my finished one from yesterday. So we'll see. Um, my, well, the one I do today is most likely going to look a lot different than this one. Um, but this is my finished one from yesterday. So I'm going to show you how to do this uh, step by step, only using three colors. And three colors you're probably going to be surprised about. And um, so, yeah, so we're going to do this in our sketchbook. So what I want you guys to do first is get a new, make sure you're on a clean piece of paper. So I'm just going to take my paper out here. I would make sure, put your sketchbook so, and I'm going to zoom out of this. Put your sketchbook so that that binding, this wire bounding, won't get in your way. So if you're right-handed, you certainly don't want it like this because that's going to get in your way. So make sure, you know, again, I'd put it at the top if you can. So that way it's definitely out of your way. Let's get this adjusted. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to have you guys do, let's see if I can get up. There we go. So you can see the whole thing. I want you to take a roll of masking tape, and we're just going to put it right here in the center of our paper. Just take a pencil, and you're just going to trace the inside of that masking tape roll. And just kind of trace around there like that. I didn't go all the way. There we go. That's going to be our circle. So our objective here is that we're going to take this circle, and we're going to change it to a sphere using value and color to change it from something flat to something that looks round. So once you have your circle drawn on there, the next step is, is we're going to add the cash shadow. So I'm going to zoom into this a bit so you can see this easier. Put that up kind of towards the top. So what I want you guys to do is kind of put a mark right here towards the bottom of the circle. I'm going to kind of make this mark like this. So if you think about it, this is probably the middle of my circle. So I'm about, I'm at the bottom fourth of the circle. So put a mark about right here. Okay. And then I want you to put a mark about right here at the bottom. So again, I kind of use my pencil to divide it up. Oops. Provided, of course, it doesn't roll on us. So this is about the midpoint. Okay. My paper isn't straight. There we go. Okay, so this is about the middle of my circle, so I'm off to the right. All right. So this is basically where my cash out is going to hit my circle. Okay. Now, I don't know if this is a, in the right spot or not, but uh, this is what I'm going to just shoot for, and then we'll see how it looks. So I'm going to just start drawing it. Uh, right here at this back, and I'm going to just kind of stretch this out and connect it back to this mark. Now you guys should be holding your sketchbook up and looking at it like this. I have to keep my sketchbook flat on my desk just because of this demonstration. Uh, but you guys know I never, I've never let you guys draw flat on the table, and I'm not going to start today. But the reason why I'm doing it this way right now is just because I'm doing this demonstration. So I'm just going to kind of mess around with this, but I am going to pick this up to just see. So you never want to draw with your paper or your canvas flat on the table because you're looking at it from a foreshortened perspective. You should always have it up. You want to see it like everybody else is going to see it. And who knows, I might adjust it a little bit here and there even as I paint it. Okay, so that's about how it looks. Yours is probably going to look a little different and that's fine. Okay, and I do like to use a pencil eraser sometimes just to kind of go in and kind of cut into this. So I like to kind of draw thick lines and then I'll go in and kind of carve out what I want to keep. Alright, so the next little trick involves an eraser. 
Okay, you can use a pencil eraser or a pink eraser, it's up to you. But I don't want to keep this uh, pencil super dark like this, especially if, with it being on white paper. So what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to erase on top of this to lighten the pencil line up. You'll st I'll still see my drawing underneath this, but believe it or not, even though acrylic paint is opaque, it doesn't always cover up pencil lines. So this is a good little trick to get into. I would always lighten this up before you start painting. And again, you can see, you can still see my drawing on there. It's just very light. So lighten up that drawing. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit. Okay. Actually, I'm going to zoom out a lot. So now what I want you guys to do, so I gave you all, I gave you all a um, reference to look at. So this is just something I got off the internet. Um, since I can't have it up on the Epson while I'm demonstrating, you guys can look at this. Uh, but this is basically what we're shooting for. So that's just a, a reference for you guys. So keep that close by. But now what I want you guys to do is kind of put your sketchbook off to the side. And I want you to grab your painting supplies. Okay. And those painting supplies should include like your plate with all your paints in it and your uh, paintbrush. Now your paintbrush should have that cap on it. What I want you guys to do is take that cap off and I want you to go ahead and put it in your bag now and zip that bag closed. Those little um, protective uh, plastic tops, a lot of times they fall off and they'll roll off on the table and you can't find it once it's on the uh, floor. So put it in your bag so it's safe and you know where it's at. So I'm going to put my bag off to the side. I've got my paint. You guys all have the same colors I have. You guys also have your ground color too. But So the colors that we're going to be using, okay, we're going to be using a color called phthalo green, cad red uh, deep hue, and then titanium white. So these are the only three colors that we're going to use. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to start mixing some colors before we start. So when you mix acrylic paints together or any paint in general, anytime you're mixing, paint. You want to mix in a certain way. So you want to start with your lightest color first and then you add your dark to the light. So I've got my paper towel, got my brush, got my bucket of water. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and just get my brush wet. With a heavy uh, body paint like this, I do like to start with a wet brush. I don't want it dripping wet. And then what I'm going to do when you are painting and grabbing paint, you want to grab your paint from the side of your pile. So never just go straight in the middle of your pile of paint and grab it. Grab your paint from the side. I'm going to start by grabbing, a, and I call these scoops and dots. This is a scoop. So I'm going to grab a big scoop of white, and I'm going to place it actually right here next to my white pile. And I'm going to go ahead and grab another scoop. So I'm going to start off with two scoops, two scoops of white. All right. And my objective right now is I want to make a light or basically a tint of red, which is what we call pink. So I'm going to take my brush without washing it. And I'm just going to, again, I'm going to go to the, the red and I'm just going to grab basically what I call a dot. So just a dot of red, because this is the darker of the two colors that I'm mixing together, this isn't going to take much to make a change. So I'm going to now mix that into my two scoops of white. And I should get, this is again a tint of red, tints are colors plus white, and a tint of red is what you call pink. Now your pink may be a little bit lighter than mine, maybe a little bit darker, but as long as, you know, it's a good tint, you're fine. Okay? 
So I'm not going to I'm not going to wash my brush off. I'm going to keep it the way it is. And you're going to find out why it's important to grab your paint from the side. So I'm going to actually try to make sort of like a medium red. So I'm going to start with white again, but just one scoop this time. Okay, one scoop of white. And again, I have paint. I have my pink on my brush, so that's why I grabbed it from the side. And I'm going to grab a little bit more than just a dot. Say maybe a, a two dots. I don't know. Worth. <laughs> I have a weird formula that I use. So I'm going to grab quite a bit just here on the top. So like a big dot. And I'm going to mix that into my pile. And what I'm going for is something that is darker than the first tent that I made, but not as dark as my straight red. Now, if you're noticing that your paint's kind of getting clumped around your brush, I like to kind of squeeze my brush down against my plate, and that kind of gets it off of there. Um, a lot of painters, when they're painting with a heavy body paint like acrylics or even oils, they use palette knives to mix their paints, not their brushes, because mixing can actually damage your brushes pretty good. So I'm going to make mine just a tad darker. Just want a little bit more contrast between these two. I think that works better. So I don't know if you guys can see that. There's the difference between my two tents that I made. Okay. So now I am going to wash my brush because now what I want to do is I want to make a basically a shade of red. So I want to make something darker and I don't want to have any of this white on my brush to mix in with that. So I'm going to wash my brush off really well. I'm going to show you how I do this. I take my brush and I put it all the way at the very bottom of the bucket. So just really smush that into the bottom of your bucket really good. And then pick that up. It's not going to hurt the bristles or the brush head. Just pick it up and reshape it. And it's perfectly fine. Okay? And make sure this is all washed off. I just don't want any of that white in here. So I'm going to put that off to the side. And then I'm going to start by making basically what I would refer to as a shade of red. Now, if you guys notice, I have a little of that pink over here on this side of my red, so I don't want to grab that. I am going to basically mix my two darkest colors here. So I'm going to mix my red with my green. Okay? But which color is darker? Is it my green or my red? Which one is darker, do you think? Green, yeah. So that means I'm going to start with my red first. So I want you guys to grab a scoop. Let's start with a scoop of red. Actually, I'm going to do two scoops. Grab another scoop. I never know what I want until I do it. So two scoops of red, and then without washing my brush, I'm going to go into the green, just so again, off to the side. Don't go through the middle of your pile. I'm going to go into this green. I'm going to grab a dot of the green. And do you guys know what green and red are to each other? Complements, that's right. So when you mix complements together, they're going, to dull, they're going to darken and dull themselves. So I'm going to mix that in there, and you're going to see a big change. Woo, look at that. Now, a lot of times when people do sort of these exercises, they pick a color like red, and they would use white and what other color to darken? Black. Okay. What I want you guys to learn, I want you to learn how to be like a fancy painter. I want you to learn how you can use compliments to your advantage, and there's a big advantage to it. Your colors are just richer, so everything looks better. So here we go. Here are the colors that I've mixed up so far. So I've mixed up a, a light tint of red, which is pink. I've kind of made, mixed up a medium tint. And then I've got a shade here. So I've got three mixtures here. Plus, I have the three colors by themselves. So technically, I have six colors to work with right now. Okay? 
So I'm going to start this by washing my brush off really well. I'm going to wash my brush off really well. I'm going to put my paint kind of off to the side here. And I'm going to grab my sketchbook. And I'm going to be ready to start painting. Kind of move this stuff here. Okay. I'm going to try to zoom into this a little bit so it's a little bit easier for you guys to see. Okay. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to, I've got a nice clean brush. Now, your brushes will get stained with your color, and that's fine. So I'm going to take, start with my lightest color, which is this pink. And I'm going to paint this pink where my lightest area of the sphere is going to be, which is about... It's going to be right over here. And this is going to be the same for everybody since we're kind of doing this. Yeah. Since we're kind of making up this circle and sphere ourselves, we're not looking at, we're not doing this from direct observation. We're all going to be doing the same thing. So I'm going to put it right there. Now notice I'm not putting it all the way over here. Um, this is actually going to be a little bit darker on this side. And I'm going to show you how to kind of prep yourself for blending. I would say this is probably the most common question I get with paint is how do I learn how to blend? Now with acrylic paints, um, a lot of people describe them as a quick drying paint. Now if you've never used any other paint before, you probably don't have anything to compare it to. But this is in, rel in relationship to other paints, it is pretty quick drying. And it can make blending difficult because of that. So what I'm going to do, I've got my kind of light, my, my light pink in here, and I'm going to kind of feather it or dry brush it around here. And this is actually going to help prep me for blending. Dry brushing is basically a, a painting technique where you have just a little bit of paint on your brush, and you just kind of paint it down on the paper, and it looks real broken. So it's not fully covering the surface. It's just really broken. And so this is actually something that I've used to just help me with blending. So you can kind of see how this is looking. And other areas are more covered than, and then some, and that's fine. So that's what my sphere looks like right now. Okay. So now the next step, without, again, I'm not going to wash my, uh, well, no, I think I will wash my brush because it's getting a little dry. So my, my brush is going a little dry. Now, again, I'm, I'm one of those people, I just don't, I don't like working with heavy body paints. So with a heavy body paint like this, I do like to have a wet brush. So I'm going to go in now and I'm going to grab that medium. And I'm basically going to paint this everywhere else for right now. And any time my paint or my brush feels a little sticky, I'm just going to dip it just a little bit into that water. I don't want to make my paint wishy-washy. I just want it to be a little bit more fluid. Now, when you're working around the edge of this circle, which will soon become a sphere, just take your time to keep it nice and clean. And again, hopefully you have your, you're holding your sketchbook in your hand and not flat on the table like I am. I'm going to kind of put it up in my hand just so I can get this edge here. But again, you should never be painting flat on the table. So again, if your paint's feeling a little sticky, just dip your brush ever so slightly in that water, and that will help. Now, the way that I have described painting before is it's kind of like cleaning up your room. It's got to look worse before it gets better. So 
if your parents have ever gotten on you about cleaning up your room and then you start cleaning up your room and you're like, listen, this is looking worse than before I started. And then your parents say, I don't care, keep cleaning. And then you keep cleaning and you're like, oh, now it's looking better. This is painting. All right, so you guys can kind of see what it's looking like, you know. Still got a gap between these two colors, that's fine. But I'm getting to the point where I'm kind of zeroing in here and I'm ready to kind of bring them together and fill in these gaps. So I'm going to take that medium all the way around. And I'm going to take it right up to where I have my light pink. Now, I could have done this exercise with any uh, combination of complementary colors. I could have used uh, yellow and violet. could have used blue and orange. Um, but um, out of the three warm colors you have, red, yellow, and orange, red is the one that has the better tense and shades out of it, so at least in my opinion. So that's why I went with these two. So now that I'm kind of encompassing and getting to the point where I'm ready to fill in this gap, I'm kind of tapping over the area. I don't have a lot of paint on my brush. And I'm just kind of tapping it. That's how I'm kind of blending it out. So I'm tap, 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 kind of around this, very lightly. And again, I have very little paint on my brush. And so that's what it looks like now. So now what I'm going to do, now that I've got my medium pink on here, I'm going to work on blending. So I'm going to go back. I washed my brush off. I'm going to go back to my light pink. And I'm going to now go over. And I'm just going to work on blending. So there's a lot of different ways you can blend. You can blend wet paint and wet paint. You can blend uh, wet paint on top of dry paint. It's all different things. I even go back and forth between working with a clean brush with no paint on it. That's something I like to do. So right now I don't have any paint on my brush and I'm just kind of going over top of this and just kind of blending this out. And again, I'm kind of tapping over this edge. And whenever I feel like it, I might go in and just get a little bit of paint to work over these areas. But again, when I'm blending, I'm not pressing real hard down onto my paintbrush. I'm very light-handed. And you can see it's kind of getting worked out now. So this is a work in progress. This is just something you just got to kind of practice and play with. So I'm just tap, tap, tap. I'm getting just a little bit of paint to help me kind of along the way somewhere in some places. You guys can kind of see where I'm at now. All right. I think I need, might need to extend this out just a little bit more. So depending on what I think it needs, sometimes I need more light, sometimes I need more dark kind of make that judgment call. And again, you guys can look at that reference that I gave you to help you. Okay. Okay. All right, so I'm going to kind of let that dry. I am going to walk around just see how you guys are doing. Um, 
play around with these two and then the next step is to actually start adding in the dark. Okay, so kind of played around with this. I'm going to give, let that get a good dry in this area right in here. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start adding in my darker value that I've made up. Okay, And hopefully I can start seeing this turn into a sphere. So it's not quite there yet. So, so again, I'm going to kind of start off with what I would describe as a wet brush, not dripping, just a wet brush. And I'm going to grab some of that darker paint that I made by mixing the red with a little bit of the phthalo green. So I'm going to grab this and I'm going to put this where the dark should be. Now when you do this stuff, it is a little bit shocking and it a lot of times won't feel right, but you just got to work with it. So I'm just going to kind of, again, if my paint feels a little sticky, I'm going to dip my brush in a little bit of paint. And I'm just going to start by laying down to this dark where it needs to go. And then I will worry about blending it later. Now, if you guys notice where I'm putting this dark, I'm not necessarily putting it all the way to the very far edge. of my sphere, soon to be sphere. And where I want to, where I know I need to blend, I am going to kind of, again, dry brush it out. Now, whenever I'm painting the, um, sort of paint mixture that I find that is the most helpful is actually my medium. So I'm going to get just some more dark down here. I want you guys just, you can see just how much right now, it kind of looks like a hot mess, which this is basically the normal stage of a painting. Okay, nothing looks blended except for my light to my medium. So what I'm going to do now I'm going to grab, again, I'm going to grab my medium paint that I used. And I'm going to kind of blend, use that to help me blend into that dark. Blend that in. And again, when I'm doing stuff like this, I am going back and forth between using a brush that has some paint on it using clean brush too at times. I'm going to got that kind of laid down there. Now I'm going to kind of go in and layering this stuff up is also helpful too. And in turn, too, when I'm working with these two values while they're wet, I'm kind of mixing them up together, too. So that helps. I'm just going back and forth. Now, if you've ever watched painting tutorials like on YouTube and stuff, you'll just see like how these painters go through this process. I mean, 
it's almost like a different stages they kind of destroy their paintings at some point just to kind of get to the right end product so you know there's going to be times where you kind of need to paint over areas or start them over just to get to where you need to go and that's fine and the nice thing is with acrylic paint is that you can uh, kind of paint over and start over again if you need to in spots And I will say I'm kind of having some problems here with just you know, blending some of this stuff out or getting it worked out. The other thing I'm noticing too, um, this happens with acrylic paint, is that when you're painting in an area, you may feel like you're actually removing the paint, like you're getting these holes or gaps. And rather than adding paint to your canvas, you're removing it. If that happens, um, just let the paint dry and then you can go back to it. There's times too I'm just mixing these two color kind of uh, tints and shades together right on the painting. Again, when I'm blending, I'm not, I don't have a lot of paint on my brush when I do have it. So I'm going to kind of leave my darker parts alone because it's really wet and I'm finding that uh, as I brush over, I'm kind of removing the paint. So I think it just needs a good dry and then I can go back to it. Um, I'm going to add just a, kind of a thin area. I need a little highlight kind of down in this area. And I kind of add that in real quiet. kind of got the paint down and now I'm going to kind of feather that in. Now I need, I don't have my brightest highlight on here yet, so I'm going to grab a little bit of the straight white. And I'm just going to put this right where the brightest highlight needs to be and it doesn't look blended in and it shouldn't. So start with just kind of like a white dot right there and then I'm going to clean my brush and I'm just going to go around the outside edge of this and just kind of um, tap on top of it to blend that out. Again, I'm just kind of tapping around the outside edge of that just to kind of blend it out. Just 
want to build it up a little bit more. So again, I'm going to let that kind of dry and I'll fix up any parts that still need to be fixed. So it's just plenty to fix. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually start the cash shadow. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my medium color and I'm just going to actually paint it all in that shape first. Um, I actually need to make more of that. So I'm going to try and make some more. Um, when you're remixing your paint, don't get too wrapped up into, you know, don't be too hard on yourself and, and, and try to work hard to make it match because I find that it's impossible to match the original color. Just get close. It says paint, so it's all going to blend together anyways. So I've remixed that, and now I'm going to paint that all in. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit so you guys can see this. i got to turn my sketchbook here. There we go. And I'm going to paint this cash shadow in all with my medium uh, pink. And again, if your paint's feeling a little sticky, you can just dip the tip of your brush into some water. Mix that in there. Um, also, too, I'm going to use that cash shadow to kind of clean up this edge a little bit of my sphere. Now the trick about getting into these uh, tight areas like right here underneath the sphere is not to have a ton of paint on your brush. There. I'm also going to use this as an opportunity to kind of fix up my cash out of shape if I need to. Now with the cash shadows, a lot of times people really haven't had a lot of uh, painting experience before. I want to just make shadows black. Well, one, we're not using black, so that's not a possibility. But the thing you need to know about cast shadows is that they are the darkest rate or darkest closest to the object that they're coming from, and they do lighten up as they stretch away from that object. So that's why I put the medium value on there first. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start adding the dark right on here on top of my medium and I'm going to make it so it gets lighter at the end. So I'm going to have to pick up my canvas or my sketchbook here. And again, you want to be very careful when you're close to your sphere. You don't want to overpaint. And there is like a like a secondary cast shadow or highlight, I'm sorry, not a cast shadow, that happens right underneath the sphere that gets reflected. So a reflected highlight. So you don't want to cover that up. So 
I'm just going to keep adding this dark or just get it started. And then I'll worry about blending it out. Luckily, some of my medium paint is still kind of wet, so that helps. So I'm just blending that out. Okay, so that's how that kind of looks right now. I still want to get darker right underneath the cache or right underneath the um, sphere. Plus, I need to add some more darker values onto the sphere. So for this, I'm going to go in and I'm going to take a little bit more green because I really want to make this pretty dark. So I want a good bit of this green, and I'm going to mix it with just a little bit off to the side, a little bit of that red, that dark red that I made. Yes, it's going to look pretty green, and that's fine. So I mixed it just right off the side. And this is going to go right underneath the sphere. And again, I want to emphasize under, because that's where the darkest area is going to be. There's that, and I'm going to need to blend that out. I'll use that dark red to help me with that. Just kind of paint that kind of over top of this. This is kind of, kind of hard. I need to hold this in my hand. I'm also going to take that really dark green that I have here and I'm going to add that also too to my sphere where it needs to be the darkest. Again, I'm going to go back into, a lot of times when I need to blend in a dark color, I just go to the next lightest one. That seems to help. And just kind of blend that out. Now you probably will notice that your paper's kind of getting bumpy and stuff. Um, that's just because of the water and the paint. It's all wet. So. So I'm going to kind of stop right there. You guys keep going. Got a few more minutes. I'm going to zoom into this. Could I still mess with this? Absolutely. There's a saying in, in the art world, art is never finished, only abandoned. So I mean, I could work on this stuff forever. Um, 
But, uh, and of course, here I go. I can't stop. <laughs> I need to stop. But, um, yeah, it's hard to figure out when to stop. And, uh, you know, to be honest with you, that you could go on and work on this forever. But, you know, get yourself in a good place. And then, yeah, so we'll move on later. But um, basically what you're going to do is when you're done, just wash off your brush really, really well at the bottom of your bucket. Dry that off. The big tip is to also is to always reshape your brush before you put it away for the day. So this is a practice you need to get into, just a habit, is reshape that brush. And then that's when you can put your cap back on it. Get in your bag, get that cap back on. And that will prevent your um, brush from getting bent in your bag. And then I always like to put my brush at the very, very bottom of my bag. So if the cap does fall off, you know, it won't hopefully get bent. So, And then your paint, you just close everything up. You're going to leave everything in there just the way it is. Just going to close that up and put the tape back on there. Keep it from falling off. And then that's going to go in your plastic bag. And you want to try to take out as much air as you want. You can also put this little illustration in here too. And just zip everything back up. So it's all in the back. Your um, sketchbook, of course, though, is wet, so that's going to go on the drying rack. So that's how we're going to clean up. But I'm going to zoom in just so you guys can get another good look at this. And there you go.